Carl Brown here for GuitarLessons365.com. Got a fantastic version of Nothing Compares to You by Prince, uh, made very popular, um, um, and a, a single for, um, I forget her name, Sinead O'Connor. And then um, Chris Cornell's version that he did on XM Satellite Radio, acoustic version. It's just unbelievable. And I, uh, I love listening to it. Has somebody requested me to do this for it, so I'm going to put a link to this to that performance because that's what this is based off of. Um, his performance of this, um, and I'm going to be covering his guitar parts. And his guitar player is a, a guy named Keaton Simons, who's a very good guitar player in his own right. And he's got some really cool solos in it, so I'm going to be covering his solos and. He's doing a lot of fills along with Chris Cornell playing the just the, the chords. Um, so I'm kind of maybe will throw in some of his fills on top of Chris Cornell's guitar parts just to make it sound unique. But I'm really trying to do it so you can just kind of do it with just one guitar, the rhythm part. Um, um, obviously not possible when you do the solos though. All right, so we're in standard tuning here. And we're going to start with this intro. So that's going to start with just a basic C major chord. And then you're going to try to bring out certain melodies within it. So he makes it a C chord. He gets that, take it up to the sus4 chord, then back down. But don't worry about that. We're just hitting the D string kind of mostly and hammering on to the third fret with your pinky and then, and then go back to two. Then we're going to go to a, a G chord in first inversion. Now, how Chris Cornell's playing this is he play, he's just playing um, the second fret there on the open A string. Then we have the open D, open G, open B, and then the high E string third fret. So no six string. So the B is in the bass. So it's in first inversion. So he, and he plays like that. You can play it like that too. But you'll see him play it like that. Then we go to an A minor chord. And he plays that A minor, and then he does a little hammer on by just picking up that third finger on the op to make it an open G or a minor um, seventh chord, and then hammering back on. So we have this all together. Then we go back to that C. 
Now when I play that C, then I'm going to really try to make this melody come out. So first let's just play the melody by itself. So you're going like that. So you're just playing the second fret there on the D, then the third fret on the D like we did before, and then the open G. And then when you do that, you're going to move it over to a G major chord. Because you want that note to kind of come out. So go. So go. So we have this. So you kind of just play the G chord. And then um, Keaton Simons in the background does this. He does a hammer on the open G onto the second fret and then back down. And it sounds cool. So all, putting all that together looks like this. happening the second time I'm playing through this. And then the vocals come in there. So basically you play that chord progression two times before the vocals come in. Um, and then we're going to uh, now cover the little, short little solo that happens over that second time you're playing through that progression. So I played that solo at the beginning. It sounds like this. So it's a great little taste of solo. The second solo is just killer. So um, this is just a warm up. So what we're doing is we're sliding into the seventh fret of the A string, and then playing five seven on the D, and then hammering five seven on the G, and then back to that uh, fifth fret there a couple times. So we have this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to rake into the 10th fret there on the G. Now, what a rake is, if you don't know, you're going to mute the th bottom strings. I'm moving it with my palm here, or you can mute it with your index finger across the strings. And then you're going to rake into, into that note. So you're hitting those muted strings, or raking across them, up until you get to the 10th fret there on the G. So that's play 10, 9, 7, 5, and then you're gonna play you're gonna play the double stop here at the fifth fret of the D and the G together. Hammer the seventh fret of the D. When you do that, you still want that G string ringing out. And then back to the two fives. So we have this. And then you're gonna end the solo like this. So it's sliding from the seventh fret on the A string down to the fifth fret. Then you play three. Then slide back five, back up to seven, and then play five three. So sort of this. And quick little hammer on from two to three on the D string. And then the open G. And then just go to like an open G chord. So it's just like the third fret of the low E, muting the A string with the bottom of that finger, and the open D, open G, and the second fret there on the D string, uh, um, B string, it's third fret on the B. All right, so that's the first solo. And then we have the verse, which is uh, similar to what we've been doing before, or what I uh, played through at the beginning. And the only thing with the verse here, the verse chords, uh, Chris Cornell a lot of time is playing an A minor seventh chord. Um, but along with him and in louder in the mix, uh, Keaton Simons is playing pretty much a straight A minor. He might play it up here. So his sound is more dominant. So you're, um, it's probably going to sound more like it if you don't play the minor seven. You play just the regular A minor. So that would sound like this. It's been seven hours in. So 
or you can choose to do it as an, an A minor 7. So it's that C without the, you don't have to do that little figure on it anymore when we're doing the vocal. So it's just C, then it's that G in first inversion that we did, and then you can choose whatever you like some the best, the A minor or the A minor 7. And then that same. And you go basically you th go through that uh, the whole section four times. So now the very last time you're playing through that, uh, at the very end of this verse, um, it goes. So from that A minor chord, it just goes instead to an E major instead of back to that C, to, instead of that, that little rhythm figure, it just goes to an E major chord. Just kind of build up on that. And then we have the chorus. So I will say that the first verse that we just did is different than the second verse. So don't think you already know the verses now because second verse uh, a little bit different. And the same thing with the chorus. Uh, the first chorus uh, uses a little bit different chords than the rest of them. So, um, but we're going to start here. The first chord in this chorus is a B flat major chord. Now he's playing it like this. He's barring with his pinky across the third fret of the D, G, and the B string. Which is kind of how I play it as well. It's more comfortable for me to play it like that. You may choose to use your third finger. It doesn't matter. And then, in addition to that, he's playing the root note here at the first fret of the A string, but adding the fifth in the bass as well. So the first fret on the low E as well. So you play that chord, those five strings, and that resolves to an F major chord. So a full F major bar chord there, full bar with first fret, second fret on the G, third on the D, and the A. So we have this. And again. And then, so after you go between those two chords twice, it's a short chorus, we just go straight to the G. Now this is the G major he's playing here that has the open B string in it, not the... He does play that a little later in the song, but it sounds fine, but just for completeness sake, he's usually playing the one with the open B. To you. And then we get into the second verse. Um, so let me see if you can uh, hear the difference here between the first verse. It's been so lonely without So I did the second chorus there too, and you can probably hear a difference in that one. So we basically play in that chord progression four times in the verse. 
Now, what happens is the second time you're playing it in the second verse, it's all the same so far, right here. Where did I go wrong? It goes from an A minor, and instead of doing that little melody, it goes to an F major bar chord. And then he makes it real quickly an F sus4 chord. So he does that like this. Play an F major chord that we did earlier. Move the pinky over to the third fret of the uh, G string. And then back down. And then the rest of the verse is the same as the, the first one. The, the second, the, the third and fourth times are the same. And it also ending with that E, it does it the same way there too. Now the second chorus here that I did. Nothing compares. Nothing compares to you. All right, so the obvious difference here, it starts with the B flat major with the F in the bass to that F, but instead of going back to that B flat, it goes to an A minor. And that's a fantastic little chord change there. And then, then to the G. All right, so it just goes B flat, F, the A minor, and G. And then we get to the guitar solo. Uh, before I show you the solo itself, let's look at the chords Chris Cornell is playing under it. So it's the same there as the verse, so two times through the verse, except the end of the second time it goes from that, it, it, basically look at it as, he, now he's actually adding some of the musical stuff he does in the intro, but it's really just the same chord progression. Um, so it's really like the third and fourth times, you know, when you're playing that verse and you, you know you play through it four times, the third and fourth time really is what it is. Because that fourth time number, it goes from that A minor to the E. Then we go to the chorus. And then we kind of extend the chorus a little bit. The chorus riff, it goes at that G that is supposed to end the chorus. Just go, you can do a little bass on there, three, two, zero on the low E, take you to an E minor, and then back to the G. All right, so that's the chords underneath the solo. Let me play through the solo itself. Uh, this solo, by the way, is I guess, it was by a guy named Keaton Simon, so it's a really nice solo. So here it goes. <laughs> So it's, it's great. Now the first phrase. So that's sliding into the seventh fret of the D string. Then play five seven on the G. Then slide up to nine. Pick seven. Then pick that a few times. Then slide back down to seven. I'm sorry. And then back to five a few times, and the hammer five to seven. And then we have that 
and double stop like we did earlier in the first solo, which is the hammer. You're going to play the fifth fret on the D and the G together, while then hammering on the seventh fret there on the D. So it is. And then he slides back into the fifth fret there of the D. So we have this all together for the first phrase. Or slide that. Yeah. Next phrase. So this one moves out of that. There's kind of a little bit of a ghost note to start. It's the 10th fret on the B string, but you really start hearing um, when it gets on the high E string. So you can play that 10th on the E, the B string. Then play 8, 10 on the high E string. Pre-bend. Whole step pre-bend. Then play 8. So we have this. And back over to that 10 on the B. Then you're gonna shift back here and grab the seventh fret on the G, eighth fret on the B, and you're gonna when you play those together, you're gonna hammer on the ninth fret. So we're this, and then you're gonna slide down into the seventh fret on the G, five over to seven on the D string. And then we have a kind of a faster little run. It goes five on the on the uh, B string, and then play seven five on the G, seven five on the D, seven five. You're gonna shift seven down to five on the A, down to three on the A. Hold there slightly, and then. And then it goes back and it slides back into the seventh fret of the A string. Then plays five seven on the D, back to five seven uh, on the G. Slide into nine, and then slide into ten. Back to nine, seven, five. So so far with this. And then after you get back down to five, there's a quick little, it's a slight little half step um, slide up and down, kind of just to get, kind of give it a little bit of inflection. So just up to seven, up to eight, back down to seven, five on the G, seven on the D, back to that five on the G. Next phrase. So that's 8th fret a few times on the high E string, 5th uh, fret a, few a couple times, over to the 8th fret there on the B. And then kind of that same uh, descending run that we did before, same thing that we did in the previous phrase, and then ended by sliding it to that 7th fret there. All right, next phrase. It's got some cool arpeggios in this one. All right, so we're gonna start here at the uh, seventh fret there of the A string, and then play five seven on the D, five seven on the G, and then slide into the seventh fret, I mean ninth fret, and play that a few times. And then back down to seven five. And then he quickly does a slide into the ninth fret, side, seven to nine, then plays seven, five on the G, over to that uh, sixth fret there on the um, D string. That's when they go to the E major chord there in the progression behind them. So behind them, so we have this. And then he plays an E major arpeggio. I'm oh, sorry. So this is seven on the A string, six on the D, 
four on the uh, G string, five on the B, and then go back down. And then when you get the, back to the bottom note, we hit that twice. All right, so then we get to the chord progression part of it, where it goes to the chorus uh, chords. And this is that first phrase. So I'm going to stop there because then we're cutting more kind of a chord arpeggiating chords after that. So um, that's the first fret on the A string. And you're going to slide into the fifth fret on the A string. Play three on the D, three on the G. And then you can do a little chromatic lick. You're going to play five, four, three, two on the G string over to three on the D. So we have this. Then you're going to play five, two on the G, then three, two, zero on the uh, D string. Then three zero on the A. So we'll do this. So when you get to that zero, grab an A minor chord. You're gonna pick across it. So you're gonna play, play open A there. You already hit that. Uh, then the D string there. You're holding the A minor chord. B, G. Then there's an open G as you go to open D chord. I'm sorry. D string as you go to the G major chord. So here it is. Then we have that three two zero on the low E, kind of we did earlier, and then we have this to end it. So that's based around an E minor chord. So we play this the uh, sixth, fifth, and fourth string. And then, so what he's doing there, he quickly does a, he plays the, the second fret on the G string and does a quick little inflection, kind of sliding up real quickly while the open B is hit as well. And then he goes down to zero on the D, so this, we have the open G, I'm sorry. So two zero there on the G, then two zero on the D, two zero on the A, low E open, and then that takes you to a G. And that G, you just hold the third fret there on the low E if you want, and you're gonna pick the open D, open G, open D, and the open B. So from that A minor, And then we get to the last uh, verse. Sounds like this. All the flowers that you planted, mama, in the backyard. All died when you went away. And I know that living with me, baby, was sometimes hard. Pretty similar stuff. It's just uh, this last verse is shorter, so it gets to the just plays through it a couple times and before it gets that E. And then the chorus is the same, except it's just extended. It's done twice. We're 
gonna extend it. We're gonna to you by the G and go to, to the E minor. When they do the E minor, nice little backwards kind of flamenco-ish strum it backwards across the strings. And then back to the G. Just one nice easy strum. Alright, so it's a beautiful cover of that song, so hopefully um, you can, uh, you, you and maybe a buddy of yours get together so you can play the solos and stuff, because it's a cool solo too. Uh, but it's kind of hard to match the vocal skills of Chris Cornell. He's just was a spectacular vocalist. All right, so please subscribe to the channel. Please subscribe to the website. Go to my website, guitarlessons365.com. I have a whole guitar academy with all my guitar courses, uh, thousands of song lessons. Um, just in you supporting me there helps me do this. So I hope to see you then, and um, we'll have some cool stuff coming very soon.